to the point with Congressman Bill Pascrell, focusing on the concerns and issues facing the families of New Jersey's 9th Congressional District. Hello, I'm Congressman Bill Pascrell, and I would like to welcome you to To The Point. Here in New Jersey, we may be born to run, but any update of the iconic Springsteen song would have to take into account the traffic jams and obviously the transit delays. We have enormous transportation needs in our state, particularly in northern Jersey, and our needs haven't been fully addressed by the state or the federal government. Deteriorating roadways, you've seen that every day. Crumbling bridges, be careful. Underserviced railways and overcapacity tunnels are slowing down travelers and making some daily commuters absolutely commuting it unbearable. Now, leadership in Washington prompts us to focus on fixing infrastructure problems as a bipartisan issue that could get the ball rolling on the major projects long ignored. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet. And the Trump budget proposal slashes federal investments in programs to fund mass transit and water infrastructure. For my part, I'm pushing forward with initiatives that can help satisfy the state's transportation needs. Last year, I worked with my colleagues, Democrat and Republican in New Jersey's congressional delegation to secure a federal grant to jumpstart replacing the century-old Portal Bridge, a major bottleneck point uh, in the Northeast Corridor. Locally, we had a $2.5 million federal investment to upgrade the Passaic bus terminal nearly $600,000 for runway safety upgrades at Teterboro Airport, and most recently, a $10 million grant to New Jersey Transit for implementation of the positive train control safety system along our rail lines. So here to talk to us about what more we can be doing instead of just talking, two great people, Martin Robbins, who I've known many years, founding director of the Allen M. Voorhees Transportation uh, center in Rutgers University, our own, and Jana Schernitz, New Jersey Policy Director for the Tri-State Transportation Campaign, a transportation advocacy group uh, that covers New Jersey and New York and Connecticut, right? So thank you both for being here today. Jan, let me ask you a question. What do you do as the policy director of the transportation, Tri-State Transportation Campaign. Well, Tri-State Transportation Campaign is a nonprofit, nonpartisan transportation advocacy organization. So as the director of New Jersey, um, I basically work on all things transportation, obviously in transit, right. uh, roads and bridges. We um, watchdog, if you will, uh, the type of spending that goes on in the state in terms of NJDOT and New Jersey Transit. Also work on bicycle and pedestrian issues. As you know, New Jersey is a pedestrian focused state, right. um, which means we've got some serious issues that need to be addressed as we have a pedestrian. How long have you been doing this? Um, a little bit over six years, going on seven years. And Marty, how long have you been doing transportation down at Rutgers? Uh, well, uh, before Rutgers, uh, it goes back more than 40 years now. 40 years, that's all? That's all, Marty? <laughs> that's all. Marty, how, how have else. things changed in the 40 years and how we look at our transportation problems? Oh, there's been a dramatic change, uh, both good and not so good. Uh, back in the early part of my career, I was involved in the formation of New Jersey Transit. Helped to write the original bill and work with Lou Gambaccini, then the Commissioner of Transportation, in, uh, in getting funding for uh, mass transit in the state and, and highways. Right. Uh, we really got the ball rolling at that time in, the, in around 1980, and we had a role uh, that continued until about uh, 10 years ago. Since that time, we've been in a, in a decline. And uh, Why? it's- why? Because there have been policies, particularly at the state level, but to some degree at the federal level, uh, to, to starve 
uh, transportation, particularly public transportation. Starve the maintenance. Starve the and maintenance. Marty, how exactly. does this happen? Because we have the largest transit system in the country. Well, we might have the system and we might have good people working on it, but if the, uh, the funding system that's initiated by the governor doesn't produce enough money, the system is not going to be, be functioning. Now, I, I take uh, New Jersey Transit. Uh, I do I too. I take the buses and the subways and the folks that take us across under the river and over into, into Manhattan. Uh, but the experiences I've had in the past four or five years, I've noticed something, particularly when I go Excella and track down to Washington. The maintenance is dreadful. The cars are all over the place. Mm. I mean, this is becoming a safety issue. Absolutely. I mean, this has been something that's um, progressed from administration to administration. This is not something that's just come up in the past few years. Um, there's been substantial starving, if you will, of New Jersey Transit's budget. What do you mean by starving of it? Well, let me give you an example. It came up at a hearing yesterday uh, when George Warrington, the late George Warrington, was executive director of New Jersey no, Transit. No. He was a, a very progressive person yes. in the position. He established a $45 million a year uh, a program called the Joint Benefits Agreement in which New Jersey Transit contributed to uh, the North, to Amtrak's maintenance of the Northeast Corridor. Right. And it was a very effective way of bringing the agencies together right. on a capital program and then spending the money. And, right. and so George was in charge back around uh, the year 2002 or three in that time period. And it lasted uh, for about five years. As soon as uh, George passed away and uh, Governor Christie took over, the Joint Benefits Agreement went from $45 million a year to zero, and it remained that way through the early years of the Christie administration. Mm -hmm. And during that time, we lost opportunities to repair the track and fell behind on the maintenance. That's called deferred maintenance, and that's a, a passport to failure. So anybody can cut a budget. Yes, you could get to any jerk budget. to cut a budget. That's right. Look, it's look very, at us in the in the Congress. It, it's very. You easy. could get anybody to cut a budget, but what are the consequences? What are the ramifications? And can the people of the state that pay many many tax dollars afford to do what you're doing? So you smile at them and say, "We're going to cut your taxes, or we're going to put this ba this budget. We're going to try to put it in balance." Ha ha, which has never happened. I mean, New Jersey is a state law; you got to do it, but a federal right. budget. Budget. Forget I think, about. I mean, I think we're we're seeing what these ramifications are of what not are properly funding. Well, you've got substantial delays. I mean, we don't we don't have to look very far. Everybody knows whether you take transit or not that these things are going on. And they're going to get worse during the summer. They're absolutely going to get worse. And the other thing that we're starving is the economic development in the state. Under Christie, we had 11 downgrades because. You know, we're not we're not providing municipalities um, with the transit so that they could so that they could develop right. around right, right. those transit hubs and really bring in the economy, bring in the bring in the rateables for the municipalities to right. make them to make these municipalities robust and New Jersey to be a vibrant. Jump in, Marty. <laughs> Along that point, uh, there was a story in the Star Ledger. I think it was yesterday about uh, one of the hottest uh, real estate markets in New Jersey, and they pointed out I think it was 19 different real estate markets. And the, uh, the interesting thing is that while we're complaining and worrying about the mass transit system, particularly the rail system, right. what are the real estate markets that are doing well? The railroad towns in New Jersey. Thank Those you. are the Absolutely. ones that are thriving. And it's what, what, that is an expression that people want the rail service. Right. They want it at a high quality. They want it to be reliable, and yet our government and the Governor Christie was in charge of setting those budgets. Right. Our government has starved New Jersey Transit. Penny wise, pound foolish, huh? Right. Right. People, because in the end, they're going to get it. Right. And, and he waited so long to really put into effect a real capital program. Too late. Too late. He, he should have done that back in 2010 when he put out his first capital budget, which was really uh, just cannibalizing the ARC project monies. And he, he, his, his, he has really been a disservice to the, the citizens of the state. Well, I know that uh, this present governor that we have in the state of New Jersey, uh, you know, he inherited a mess too. We know that when he became the governor of this state. However, to do it on the backs of the commuters, to do it on the backs of those people who had to get to a job, right. whether it would be a bus, be a transit, or, or being our roads, doesn't matter. Does not matter. It is not good. Right. 
because it has consequences. Right. He, he could have um, set up a five-year capital program that would be a success. What he did was he set up a five-year capital program to fail. And it reduces anxiety. Fail. It reduces anxiety out there. How many jobs were stopped last summer because they ran out of money all over the state of New Jersey? Oh, that was a, that was a disgraceful situation. And it never should have happened. And what did he get out of it? Three-eighths of a percent. <laughs> three eighths percentage off the sales tax. The people benefit. don't even notice the difference. No. They, in fact, most and, people don't even and, know it. And he stopped <laughs> construction for 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 uh, three months. Right. And put workers uh, on the street. It was. Uh, you look back on it. It was uh, again a disservice to the people of New Jersey. Now, when I first came to the Congress a few <laughs> moons ago, twenty years ago, I was on the transportation. One of my committees was transportation, and so it was right down my alley. Jersey always has a couple of guys on there. Yes, you do. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's important to us, not only the transit system, but the entire inter, interlocking uh, uh, of the systems, the railroads, planes, the whole thing. What I noticed, the first thing I noticed was that Democrats and Republicans, particularly in leadership, worked together on transportation. Mm -hmm. Look, probably the one, great, one of the great transportation presidents of our time was Dwight D. Eisenhower. He was no Democrat. In fact, he was probably very independent as a, as a politician. He was, he was thinking about running as a Democrat, then he wound up running as a Republican. He was, was a great president, Dwight. Not only a great general, but a great president. He saw this in front of him. He had this vision about taking the highways across the country on security. The security issue was very important to Dwight, the general Eisenhower. It yes. was very important to him. You got to get people to places, out of places sometimes. And you got to get people across the country so that we see one another, not just on a hopeful wish of some, of some sort. Everybody in the Congress that I knew that was in leadership on transportation, and that, at that time, remember, I took the 8th Congressional uh, the seat. That was Bob Rose. He was the head of, he was the Democratic leader in, in transportation. Yes. And, and Schuster was the Republican leader. Now, his son is the chairman of it. Yes. Uh, whether the apple fell far from the tree or not is, and we'll leave other people to decide. But they agreed on five-year plans right. so that this, the, the state, each state knew how much money he was going to get from the federal government beforehand. You can plan projects. You can turn them down or accept them. This was important. Up until the Tea Party. And the Tea Party said, we're going to save all of this money, and they'll be the first one to complain that they're stuck in traffic. They'll be the first one to say that the trains are late. I can't get any place. They'll be the first one to say, me, take your mass transportation? We don't need it. I mean, can you see if we didn't have mass transportation going in and out of the Lincoln Tunnel, going over the George Washington Bridge? Mm -hmm. Right. Going, going over every the White Stone Bridge. What, where would we be? Well, we're so we're so built out in New Jersey, and especially you know the New York City metropolitan area that not one mode of transportation can absorb the other, and we have to have robust options in order to keep everybody moving, and that's also keeping going back to the economy. When you have leadership in D.C. and leadership in Trenton that recognizes the economic driver that Courage. transportation is. Courage. Look how long it took us, Jenna, to get the gas tax. Now we could have done this nine years ago when gas tax was, well, the gas price was fairly low because we don't have courage. We don't have courage of our conviction because it's spending money. Oh, there they go again, spending money. Well, if it's on the things that are necessary, then we need to do it. And we're gonna have this problem again. Get out of the way. In a few more years because we're not building in these uh, periodic uh, increases to keep it going, making it sustainable. We're not doing that. We're going to have this argument over and over and John over Lewis again. John Lewis says, Congressman Lewis from Georgia, get out of the way. And you don't want to know something? That's not a simplification, oversimplification of our problem. Who is in the way, Martin? Who is in the Who way? Who is in our way? Well, I think uh, the Trump administration may be in our way, among other things. Uh, what I've heard about the, their infrastructure planning, I don't, it doesn't uh, occur to me that it's going to work. Uh, I think the privatization, the, privatization <laughs> will solve about 5% of the problems. 5%. That's the idea from Indiana. Indiana did that. Right. The, and that, uh, is, that was a case where there was uh, uh, 
a road already in being and they decided to put tolls on it and or, or turn the tolls right, over to right. a private company. <laughs> Those opportunities are, particularly in the Northeast, are rare. Right. And the public has shown, and the history of tolling has shown, I was just reading a little piece on that, is, is that people don't want tolls imposed on roads that they're already using. Okay. Look, we're going to take a minute, okay. and we're going to come right back. Okay. You guys are great. Terrific. <laughs> and you got, you got the fever. We need you out there talking. Seriously. We'll be right back with our great, great guest stars. <laughs> the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Across America, Excess Food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, helping solve child hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back. It's the Marty Robbins, uh, Jenna Schernitz show. Uh, I'm here uh, in, the, in the caboose trying to get the things going here. And really, thank the both of you for being here. You have an expertise. You know what you're talking about. Gee, isn't it good when you're talking to people that know what they're talking about? <laughs> we can learn something for crying out loud. You know, instead of talking about our opinions all the time, most of the time, many of our opinions, I found out, Marty, in the Congress, are not substantiated by the truth or facts. Hmm. That's, That's a problem. pretty distressing. Okay, so let's get back to where we're talking about. And I, you, you just saw me. I wanted to check the number. The, this administration budget in Washington, which is dead on arrival as far as both many Democrats and Republicans are concerned. He can toot his horn all he wants. $630 million cutting out of Amtrak long distance lines. Now that's not the Northeastern line, the line I get on Mondays and go when I go to Washington. But it's many of the other lines that are out there. And as you say, you, I like your word, you starve it. You kill it. Yep. That's how you do it. You don't, you don't even have to do away with it. Just, just starve it. It'll, It'll just, die on its die own naturally. weight. You know? what, what's the main priority in New Jersey? The Gateway for us? Project. Absolutely. You all agree? Yes, Absolutely. Wow. Definitely. The Cross Hudson commute. We've got to get this Gateway Tunnel going. Governor Christie canceled the ARC project. One of, no the, biggest, one of the biggest mistakes. Thousands of jobs. We, we lost uh, almost a generation yes. uh, of, of proper... Uh, but doesn't it sound good, Marty, doesn't it sound good? I'm canceling because this is going to go over budget. Who could argue with that, Marty? Well, it was a, that was a fraud. I know it, I know it was. It Tell was us. Fraudulent. It was all about uh, canceling the project, cannibalizing the, the money that had been so carefully organized and putting it into highway building and avoiding uh, going forward on a gas tax. And the governor was able to do that. That was in 2009, excuse me, 10, 9 and 10, I guess it was 10. And he was able to do that and he postponed it for six years. And he was able to say, I, I never asked for a gas tax increase. Could the Democrats have stopped that and continued the tunnel? Or does the governor have no, that the much governor power? in New Jersey has enormous power. More so than any other governor in Without the country, doubt. probably. So I know, I, I, I thought about that when it was going on. And unfortunately, or whatever, uh, our Constitution gives the governor immense power, and the legislature was unprepared to, and maybe incapable of being able to stop him. Maybe both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that tunnel, how important was it? Oh, it, we Tell would, us. You, you two are the experts on well, that. Because I mean, you know about well, for, the planning yeah, for the uh, last tunnel as, as, that he as Jana stopped. pointed out, yeah. it's become even more important than it ever was. Why? Because of Superstorm Sandy. The exist, yeah, those existing tunnels. There is another we timeline. We don't have to worry about Super, uh, super Storm Sandys anymore because the president is going to do away with our, <laughs> our connection with the yeah. climate change and everything. we got everything solved we have a as the water rises around Manhattan. <laughs> I mean, we have a timeline that we would not be able to control. You've got to take these tunnels out of service. You take these tunnels out of service, you knock transportation capacity down by 75%. You can't do that in the Northeast Corridor. But Janet, it's a $3 trillion I, I economy. Went to the meeting, you can't do it. I went to the meetings for 14 years, Democrats and Republicans. Rodney Freelinghuis and I were always at those meetings. 
the de Democratic senators at the time, Frank Lockenberg, may, Lockenberg, may rest in peace, uh, Bobby Menendez, they were at those meetings. And we thought we put a good project together. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go another 14 years and plan the next tunnel? Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, I, it's not a matter that I want you to. It's that you have to because they destroyed that, uh, Christie destroyed that plan. We had to go back to square one. The process is now moving a bit, but even with the process moving and there's an environmental study going on and there's commitments, engineering for the portal bridge, which you mentioned, but, but what is really of concern is that the one piece of the funding for the start of the, the, the new tunnel is actually been uh, uh, undermined in the Trump budget. That's right. I, it, it's hard to Capital believe. Capital projects. He, you know, all those people, his secretary of transportation says, oh, this is the most important project. We got to move on it. Well, secretary th Chow. Yeah, didn't somebody Who's been there before. You think she would know. You think she'll speak out. You think she'll stand up to her president. You got to be kidding me. But do you think so? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody's got to. That's the point. And that people like you will. Uh, and, yeah, and but I can't story, keep my big mouth wagging on everything. You know well, that. You can't. You're doing a great job on other things as well. But but uh, c certainly Senator uh, Menendez, Senators Menendez and Booker mm -hmm. can do their share on this, and they've already started with a letter that they just sent. Uh, it's it's incredibly disheartening that after all this. The first thing out of the box in the Trump uh, budget is to under to knock out the money for uh, for the Gateway project. That's it's really disheartening, because whether you're talking about the commuter, who's waiting for the train to get into New York City to work or any place to work, that little com commuter, or you're talking about a big tunnel, right. what comes down to whether or not we're going to be able to afford, and you're as you said, Martin. You must afford it. We got to find a way to fund it. Oh yeah, it's and and it cannot just be a one or two year plan, and then you shut down the project when the governor, whoever the governor is, hiccups. Right. You got to have a plan that's sustainable. You use that word a lot. What do you mean by it? We well, let's let's just look at the timeline for Gateway, looking at not full realization until 2031. Wow. And the, and you've got another timeline that we're working on, which is the viability of the existing tunnels. Everything has to stay focused and prioritized in order for us to get to that timeline. And, and that's really the key priority. And it's right. going, it, needs to, it needs to be a prioritization in the New Jersey administrations, New York, and DC, because this is going to, this nation. is, in the nation, this is going to, this, is, this project is going to outlast some By the of way, let me ask you, you talk about the coordination between New York and New Jersey, okay? Let me ask you a question, Marty. Do you think we should blow up the, the, the Port Authority system and build a new coordinated system? Or can we salvage the Port Authority system and make it work for us? We should not blow it up. Okay. No, we should not at all. In fact, under I John... I used the wrong term, but that's well, okay. Or, or, you know, or, or walk away from it. Right. Under John Degnan's leadership in the, the, in the second half of Christie's terms, uh, the Port Authority has begun to steady itself and be done some very good things. What I'm worried about in terms of the Port Authority is the power grab that I see that Governor Cuomo is making. He's become incredibly difficult. He became very, very obnoxious at times on the bus terminal yes. and we had to put him in his place yes. right. and I, I worked very closely with Jerry Nadler on that congressman who I deeply respect from Manhattan and of course uh, he he I, I told Jerry you can't be a lapdog to your governor I can't be a lapdog to my dog we got to do what's right for the people for crying out loud or right for the area too because it can't be a quid pro quo your state my state the region we need to yeah, refocus you need to right. refocus that right. priority of the port authority and go back to its original mission which we've gotten off but of because can't of you politics you serve in doing that can't you get the state to focus the states to focus on what needs to be done and keep on pounding away on it Sure. Sure. I mean, that's really what our focus has been. Yeah. But unfortunately, with the with with the starving of the funding and the, ne and the neglect, right. we're really seeing w the ramifications so and what we have talking about. about it. Let's do something Absolutely. about it. But you you, you that's the, that's yeah. the priority for us. Well, you've the got, gateway. You've got two yes. big. Well, you got uh, two big uh, projects. The Port Authority bus terminal, bus terminal. Is, is a second priority. Yeah. 
It's also and it looks like that many of the problems have been solved. Now, Degden was very important in that. He sure was. And I thought he took a bad rap from Governor Como, uh, which was unneeded, unnecessary. Well, we're all in this together, for crying out loud. If the water rises over Manhattan, it's going to eventually get to New Jersey. And by the way, if we have any more Sandys, right Sandy, Sandy hurt a lot of folks inland, not only on the beaches. Right. Incredibly horrible situation. Right. But it came in. We got to have transportation system that can, in some way, get people out of places sometimes. Yes. Absolutely. And evacuate right. people. But don't forget, buses carry more more passengers than rail. So while we're focusing on Gateway, we also have to focus on on the bus because, as I said before, neither one can absorb the overrun from the other. So they all have to be functioning in order to um, meet the capacity and the ridership uh, mo demands. Most people don't realize it right now, but there is a cap on the number of buses that can use the Port Authority That's bus right. terminal in the peak That's period. Right. Right. And so Will that cap exist with the new terminal? No. Mm -hmm. The new terminal is, ex right. we have to see what the, the plan is, because right. that isn't yet agreed upon. So right. but, the, but, but the, new, the whole idea is to expand the capacity of the right. bus terminal so that cap will end. Um, that, that cap is going to be, could be very detrimental to the economic development of New Jersey. Now, we didn't, we didn't have enough time to get into light rail I want, I want light rail all through North Jersey, Northwest Jersey. They got enough. Do you ever see what happens on Route 23 up here, for crying out loud? Not Sussex, crazy. Warren County. How do people get down? The place is backed up forever. It's bumper to bumper. You got to come down to the bus terminals down here, uh, depots down here in, uh, in Wayne. They need help out there. Oakland. I want to extend that light rail beyond Hawthorne. Oakland, up into Sussex County, let's become a modern, you know, a couple of my friends were saying to me last night, they were just in Europe and saw f quick rail, fast rail. When are we going to get that, Bill? I said that the rate we're going, you and I will never see it. But what you have is long-term vision. And that's what we need in Trenton and what we need in D.C., this long-term vision. And we don't have that. The, we build for now. We're not building for we, the future. We have to close on that point. You guys were great. Jana, you were terrific. Martin, you're, you're terrific. You, you, both of you deserve a lot of credit on a tough, tough issue when the politicians like myself have BS their way through this thing. And I'm telling you, and if we don't have a, we don't have a resolution on this kind of thing, not only will traffic back up into the suburban communities, which is it already, but people are going to get angry at one another. Okay, so I thank you for watching this edition of To The Point. I'd like to uh, thank my guests today. Aren't they terrific? Marty, uh, Robbins and, and Janet Schernitz. Uh, you've heard our thoughts. Uh, now I'd like to hear from you uh, what you think today about today's show. So if you have any comments at all, any comments or questions, stay tuned. Uh, our address, our phone number, our website address uh, appear uh, in a moment. Uh, I want to thank you again for watching, and I want to see you again on To The Point. And thank you.